I am so excited to be here this morning and to be able to share with you Bible Essentials. It truly is a thrill and an honor to be able to do this each week. All right, last week we saw where God made an everlasting covenant with David. His seed, his kingdom, and his throne will endure forever. All right, beginning then in 1 Kings, David's son Solomon would be the third king to reign, to rule over Israel. Solomon was the wisest man to ever live on the earth. It would be with Solomon's reign that Israel would see its pinnacle in wealth and power in the world. In fact, it's hard to believe this, but Israel was the world power during Solomon's reign. Solomon built the temple of God in Jerusalem and he dedicated it to the Lord, but soon after, Solomon's heart began to fall away from serving God. And I want to read to you what God tells him because of this. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11, and let me read this. It says, Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days for the sake of your father David. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. There's that word chosen. God chose Jerusalem as well. Skip over here to verse 29. It says this, now it happened at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilohite, met him on the way. And he had clothed himself with a brand new garment, and the two were alone in the field. Then Ahijah took hold of the new garment that was on him and tore it into twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Skip down with me to verse 35. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and give it to you ten tribes. And to his son I will give one tribe that my servant David may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself to put my name there. All right, so it would be with 1 Kings chapter 12, that the nation of Israel would split. The 10 northern tribes called Israel under the rule of Jeroboam, Solomon's servant. And then you would have Judah in the south under the reign of Solomon's son, Rehoboam. Now, Jeroboam the leader of these 10 northern tribes called Israel did not want these 10 northern tribes going down to Judah to worship God in the temple. He was afraid they would defect to Judah. So he made a golden, two golden calves, placed one in Dan and one in Bethel so that it would be very easy and convenient for those 10 northern tribes to stay in the north and worship these golden calves. A couple kings later, about four kings later, King Omri would buy the hill of Samaria and turn Samaria into the capital of, the, of Israel, these ten northern tribes, and the worship center for Israel, these ten northern tribes. And of course, Judah would worship in Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord. All right. Now, the rest of 1 Kings, 
you will read about the king that was ruling in Israel, these 10 northern tribes, and the king that would reign over Judah. And I want to show you this just so that you know and can see it with your eyes for just better understanding. This is very basic, but essential to helping you understand your Bible. So turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 15. Just flip over a couple pages and let me show you this. It says in 1 Kings 15.1, In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abijam became king over Judah, and he reigned three years in Jerusalem. So, the 18th year of Jeroboam reigning over those ten northern kings, Abijam became king over Judah. Do you see that? Look at skip to verse 9. It says, In the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Asa became king of Judah. Then if you turn to verse 25 or look at verse 25, it says, Now Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah. So in Asa's second year of reigning over Judah, Jeroboam's son, Nadab, reigned in his place over Israel. And you will read this all the way throughout 1 Kings and the beginning of 2 Kings. Also, keep in mind that these two nations, these brothers, would war against each other. Sometimes Judah would join with another nation and war against Israel. Sometimes Israel would join with another nation and fight against Judah. Okay, there would be constant warring and um, strife between these two nations. Next time we meet, we are going to go into 2 Kings and we are going to talk about the Babylonian captivity and its significance because it's essential to helping you better understand your Bible. Until next week, you all have a great time.